My friends, I hope you all are doing well. Welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Grip Review. This episode marks the beginning of a new series here on the channel. This series involving a 1992 Japanese Toyota Land Cruiser. It is over 30 years old and this is its maiden voyage. I'm going to pull over here for a second and show it to you just briefly. There you go everyone, 30 years old. That is a 80 series Land Cruiser. Already this trip is off the rails. The forecast said that it was going to rain like after midnight, but that's obviously not the case. For now, I guess we're gonna be stuck inside of the vehicle, that's okay. While we're stopped here, let's talk about this for a second and some of the nuances. So since this is a Japanese vehicle, imported from Japan, it is right side drive. That has taken some time to get accustomed to. So far since I've had this vehicle, I've driven it 201 kilometers. That's something else that I've had to get used to, the kilometer speedometer. Constantly I'm doing the conversions from kilometers to miles and to be honest, I got tired of doing that. So I downloaded this app here which is a GPS speedometer, and it seems like it works pretty well. I've done 42 miles already on this trip. Average speed, 33 miles an hour. Maximum speed, 55. Another oddity inside of this vehicle is this right here. Down here, we have an ice maker. We have a refrigerator. They call this the cool box. With this vehicle, there's a number of oddities and weird features, all from Japan. Later on, I'll talk about those in more detail. But for now, let's drive. Jesus, this road. Wow. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> So far, I haven't seen a soul out here. It looks like I may have the entire place to myself. Now, speaking of which, I am out here in the Linville Gorge, right outside of the Linville Falls. The Linville Gorge is considered to be the Grand Canyon of the East Coast. This is a very rugged location. It could be very dangerous in places. And at the same time, it's just stunning. I mean, it's just such a beautiful place. For now, everyone, I'm just gonna drive this road, look for a campsite for the night. The time is 3.52 and it's 43 degrees. It has been years since I've been out here. <laughs> and this place hasn't changed a bit. The road is just in the worst shape ever. 
which makes it kind of fun actually. It's a good test for this vehicle. Some of this road is so worn. I mean, it's just nonsense. <laughs> As I'm driving along here, I'm looking for a campsite, preferably one with a nice view, even though I'm not really sure if that matters because it's supposed to rain, so <laughs> I don't know. I guess more than anything, I'm just driving to drive. I'm driving to get accustomed to this vehicle, namely with the right side drive. That's pretty different. Here in the United States, you're on the left side, you're staying next to the yellow line. With this vehicle, you're right next to the edge, and that does not feel right at all. To be honest, it's not that bad. I'm getting used to it pretty quick. Oh. Whoa, holy sh Let me show you all this spot. I'm not going to camp here. I might camp over here, but wow. Yes, it does this when you put it in reverse. Check out this view. Woo. That is nice. Look at that. I'd like to wake up seeing this. So I might go across the road here and take the campsite that's right over there. Let's see if this works. Yeah. That's not bad at all. And it's almost level. Am I going to level this out? Heck no, I'm not going to waste my time. The thing is, when a vehicle's not completely level, you just switch sides. That's all you gotta do. Or if you want to, use your jack. Don't build a big pile of rocks. Don't use fancy equipment. All of that is just nonsense. Since it's not pouring at the moment, let's go ahead and talk about the Land Cruiser. 1992 Japanese Land Cruiser. It has the 4.5 liter V6 in it, also known as the Monster Engine, also known as the Tractor Engine. This is the exact same 4.5 liter as the American version. Getting an engine where you can easily get parts for, that was important for me. So I wanted the 4.5, that's what I got. It's pretty funny, in Japan in 1992, the engine was in the Land Cruiser. At the same time, it was also in a forklift. <laughs> the transmission was in a bus. It has 129,000 miles on it, which is incredible considering this is 30 years old. This is older than a good portion of my viewers. Going back to engines, I did consider the diesel. I love diesels, you guys know this. I had Moose, the old army truck, but I didn't wanna buy something where parts could be an issue. From what I understand, and I could be wrong. Getting parts for the diesel is not the most complicated thing in the entire world. It can take some time though. I should mention this, when it comes to talking about a Land Cruiser, I'm repeating what I've read. I'm repeating what I've been told. Many of you all know more about this vehicle than I do. Check this out everyone, a factory winch directly from Toyota. Some additional strange features for this Land Cruiser, a bed platform, a seating platform. This panel here moves back here. 
so that you can lay down. You have a table and underneath this platform, we have a stove and a sink. I opened up the back here, locked the tire carrier. That's a nice feature. I also tried to open up the back windows here and I kind of got them open. They're going to need a little bit of TLC. I don't think they've been opened and closed for a really long time. But yeah, everyone, this is nice. It's 345 and my watch actually says it's 36 degrees. I don't think it's actually that cold. Maybe at the weather station that's around here it's that cold, but definitely not here. Before it gets too late, let's go ahead and make coffee. And let's just fire up this Japanese stove sink thing and let's see if this even works. Something about that stove is not functioning correctly. The way that the butane mounts inside of it, there's something messed up in there. I was able to actually get the can inserted without it leaking any gas, but like just touching the canister, it would start up again. So that thing I think is well past its prime. When it comes to the sink, that is an oddity, folks. So inside of this case is a container that has a lid on it. The thing is, I have looked this thing over and I've not been able to get that jug out. I can lift up the stove, there's some like hinges on the side, but I can't get it lifted high enough to move that jug. In the end, this is an interesting idea, but this is not going to stay. I, I want this out of the way. I do like the platform though. And I think taking another piece of wood and just making like a tabletop over here, that makes a whole lot more sense. Or I could even just set up a table here. I mean, whatever, plenty of options.
I think it's cool to think that this vehicle used to be halfway around the world. Somebody else used to camp in this. They built this interesting platform here. <laughs> they put in the stove and the sink. That's different. And now here I am doing the same thing, camping in it. I'd love to know who had this before me. Who was the owner? Where did they have it? Where did they go? It's interesting, in Japan, Land Cruisers, they're popular, but they're not super, super common because it's a big vehicle. In Japan, it's more popular for smaller vehicles, especially when it comes to like the like off-roading, overlanding, that sort of stuff. From what I understand, 90% of the population goes with a Jiminy instead of a Land Cruiser. And that's again because of the size of these, the cost of fuel, and also the cost of the vehicle. Well, my friends, dinner is made. We have jasmine rice with Hawaiian chicken and pineapple. Oh my gosh, it smells so good, so good. I've been looking forward to doing this trip so I can have this meal. <laughs> Anytime that I go out for a trip, I like to cook really, really good. If, well, I should say this, if I'm going out for like an overland sort of trip or going to the cabin, I like to cook really good. Most of the time, it doesn't always work out. If I'm going for a backpacking trip, that's when I want to do a meal. 
First off, we have a lot of predators in the woods, so it's not a great idea to cook in camp. Following the triangle rule all the time is not easy, because we have bears, bobcats, the occasional mountain lion, coyotes, on and on and on and on. Plus, most people don't go on a backpacking trip with like a steak or something like that. As you all can see, it's dark now. Evening has come, it's around 7 p.m. It's been a good afternoon. I've just been kicking back, drinking coffee, listening to the rain, and now it's time to eat. The stove and sink thing it makes a fantastic little table, but this thing has got to go. First off, the stove doesn't work. The sink thing is interesting. There are multiple versions of this combo here. I've seen some that have like electric pumps, so you can have water and whatnot. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of this. I'd rather have a table that I could put up and also take down if I want. I guess in Japan, they have a number of like Land Cruiser overland setup models. I believe they call it the Active Vacation, and it'll have like the bedding in the back. Most of the Active Vacation models have the stove and the sink. Am I going to eat all of this? Yes, yes I am. <laughs> Every single bit. Here we go. Mmm. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's good. As far as the Land Cruiser goes, this is the first trip out with it. I love it. I absolutely love it. This is such a cool vehicle. I mean, it's, it's so rugged. I mean, there's almost a foot of ground clearance. There's no place that this vehicle cannot go. It's full-time, four-wheel drive. It'll climb a tree. This has the center locker, but not the front or the back locker. For myself, those lockers aren't that important. This vehicle is not going to be a rock crawler. And in truth, for the most part, I plan to leave it the way it is. Not only will the resale value of this stay higher if I just leave it alone, leave it stock. As soon as you begin changing things, you alter the ride quality. It's very easy to take these vehicles and make them incredible off-road and make them terrible on-road. For myself, I like a balance. On-road, off-road, good enough. But there are things that I want to do here. For an example, the radio has to be switched out. It does work, but it was designed to pick up Japanese frequencies, so that thing's got to go. I need some music in here, plus I want something with some Bluetooth connectivity. Next, the windows, they all need to be tinted limo black. And I'll do that pretty much all the way around. Not only is that going to keep this vehicle cooler in the summertime, but it's going to provide privacy. That's super important, especially at trailheads. You don't want people looking inside of your vehicle to see what's in there. Something else that I'm going to do is install a reverse camera. They're super helpful. I definitely want one. From there, we will figure out what to do with this vehicle together. So if you have any recommendations, any ideas, comment down below. Again, I'm not going to turn this into a rock crawler or anything like that. It doesn't need a snorkel. I'm not going to be fording rivers or anything like that, so... <laughs>
night, everybody. Well, it's about 11 o'clock. It's time for bed. As you all can hear, it's just raining way outside. It's been doing this basically all afternoon, all night. It's been quite pleasant, actually. It has been incredibly quiet this evening. Not a single car on this road. I mean, I feel like I have the entire mountain range here all to myself. All right, I'm going to sleep. I'll see you all in the morning. Good night, everybody. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm not entirely sure what time it is, around 7-ish. But, yeah, I slept great last night. Really did. This platform here, incredibly comfortable. The mattress that I used, the DoD mattress, it's awesome, but it's too big for it. It worked this time, but I need to get something different. But yeah, everyone, slept great. <sighs> Just been a rainy night. Just rained all night long. It's been super quiet out here. I can't believe it, but not a soul has gone up and down that road. Not one. That's pretty rare for this area because it's pretty popular. But yeah, it's time to get up. Get some coffee. <sighs> oh, man. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Did I get you? I haven't done that in a long time. The best part of the morning right here. Cheers, my friends, cheers. By the way, check out this cup. A viewer had this made for me. Thank you so much, my friend. I really appreciate it. I use it all the time. Cheers to him, cheers to you all. It is a nasty day out there. The temperature is right around 40 degrees right now. It's windy, still raining. It's beautiful too, all at the same time. Last night, I did a search about this area and I came across an interesting article. Charlotte, North Carolina, woman's SUV found near the Linville Falls. They believe that she came out here for a hike or something, but she is still missing. Let's see. She went missing on May 17th. Her name is Frances Apperson. Her vehicle was found in the Linville Gorge parking area. And it sounds like they've searched this area relentlessly. They've used drones. I don't know. Stuff like that happens. This area over the years has had a fair amount of missing people. At the same time, there's been quite a few deaths. This area is very popular for rock climbing and so on. People get lost, get off trail. Some of the trails are really poorly marked. Before we get on the road this morning, let's talk a little bit more about the Land Cruiser. I already talked about the plans that I have for it. Tint the windows, replace the radio. 
uh, the backup camera. <laughs> Some of the quirks that I'm getting used to. So this vehicle is right side drive instead of left side. The signal and the wipers are on the opposite side of the wheel than what we're accustomed to. So anytime that I go to make a turn, I end up turning on my wipers <laughs> every single time. That's kind of funny. With this vehicle, the carpeting, I'm not sure if this is like stock Toyota or if the previous owner did something because like it is so plush. It is like shag carpeting in here. Like it's super comfortable. I like it. I'm not going to take it out, but it is a little bit retro. <laughs> I mentioned at the very beginning that I know there's tons of people who know more about these vehicles than I do is to those who know, is that stock or is that something someone did? Comment down below. Another little quirk about this vehicle, there's no cup holders. I mean, not a single one. I don't think anyways. <laughs> With my coffee cup, I have to like set it between like the cool box, which is like the refrigerator thing, and the seat itself. So uh, yeah, I'll have to work on that. So far, I really, really like this, and I hope you all do too. Please consider a name for this vehicle. We need to come up with something. At the moment, I don't have any ideas. I'm not very clever, so... And it's early. <laughs> I'm going to break everything down, put it up. Let's hit the road. It's time to go. There's no real point of staying here. Unfortunately, there's just not much we can do here today. The winds are picking up, everything's soaking wet, so there's no fire. Oh, 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 uh, something else that I need to add to this system is a tarp. I was watching a Japanese camping video the other day. This guy, he had like a sort of, I don't know, it was a funky little truck thing. I've never seen anything like it anyway. So he had these clips that he used to attach to the side of his vehicle and he was able to set up a tarp that way. I contacted him and he was able to tell me the name of the company that makes those clips. DOD Outdoors. These clips, they're not available in the US yet, maybe in the future, but they can attach to the side of some vehicles and they will attach to the Land Cruiser. I contacted a Japanese outdoor seller on eBay and I asked them if they could acquire some of those for me and they can, they did, and I purchased them from them. I tell you what, the Japanese people are super awesome. Anytime that you need anything, just be super polite, reach out to a seller, and usually they can hook you up. I've done that over and over and over throughout the years. In the future, I will have a tarp awning sort of setup on this vehicle, and that's going to be nice. Let's do a quick walk around here. Beautiful morning. Foggy and perfect. <laughs> There's no reason to send up the drone. You're not gonna be able to see anything. I like this spot right over here though. This is nice.
I would not recommend this for like a car or even a small SUV. You're going to need some good ground clearance to get up here. But luckily the road's not muddy. That's a big surprise. I've been out here before where like it'll be super muddy, just a big mud pit. My friends, thank you all very much for joining me for this trip. It's time for me to go home. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the thumbs up. I do appreciate it. Let me know what you think we should call this thing. And folks, I'll see you around soon. Strength and honor, bye for now.